Hello, everyone. My name is Will. Uh, this summer, I've been working with Dr. Brian Woodwan on the design and simulation of a small scale electron LINAC. So, to start off, a LINAC is just short for linear accelerator. And with linear accelerators, we're using time dependent electromagnetic fields to accelerate charged particles. Now, what that means is basically rather than just having a constant uh, and uniform electric field and sending a, an electron, for example, through it, uh, we actually have an ele uh, electric field that wiggles back and forth, and we use that to accelerate our particles. Now, Linux are generally lower energy than other accelerators, but they do retain wide applications in fields like medical security and, of course, research, as we're talking about now. Uh, and these structures commonly range, you know, in size from on the order of being, you know, meters long. And you'll see that in things like X-ray productions and hospitals up to kilometers, which you'll see in like professional research facilities such as Slack. And our goal this summer was basically to design a Linux that's small enough to be portable. So here's a picture of our design, a couple of pictures from different uh, perspectives. Uh, we have three and a half different cavities and each of the full cavities is uh, a little less than six tenths of an inch long. This is our half cavity in, in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, and it's designed to operate at 10 gigahertz. I'll explain what that means a little bit more, but basically the electric field inside is gonna be, is gonna have a frequency of 10 gigahertz. And this amounts for a total length at least of the accelerating cavity, not amounting for uh, things like power sources and cooling of 2.71 inches. So I've mentioned the electric field a couple times, and as you might expect, we need to worry about simulating it. So there's two sources of the EM field we really need to worry about simulating. The first is an RF standing wave, which we actually use to accelerate the particles. Uh, this was done in HFSS, a uh, piece of software. So here I have an animation of the electric field. Uh, and you'll note that in successive cavities, the electric field actually uh, opposes or it's in opposite directions. And so the idea is that an electron will be emitted here and it enters this cavity and it can be accelerated. And by the time it reaches the next cavity, the electric field in this cavity has uh, flopped over in the other direction and acceleration can occur here. Uh, as I mentioned, the frequency of this, although it's not immediately obvious in this animation, is 10 gigahertz. And because we have an electric field here, we are going to be setting up joule heating on the, uh, the boundary of this cavity, which is going to amount to about 406 kilowatts of power loss if we have a copper boundary condition. The second piece of the EM field we need to worry about uh, comes from how we actually want to inject the uh, electron into our cavity. So, and we do that via modulated surface potentials. So if I were able to zoom in uh, in this part of the scanner, uh, you would see a couple surfaces. I've only drawn the top half. This is just the axis of the accelerator. Uh, we have three electrodes in green, blue, and purple. And then we have this emitter. So uh, these three electrodes are all constant potentials. And the emitter, the emitter's potential, uh, it wiggles up and down uh, with a, another 10 gigahertz sine wave. And our goal in choosing these potentials, we choose them cleverly so that current is only pulled off of the emitter when the emitter's potential is at its lowest value. So we want just a little burst of charge and then nothing, and then a little burst of charge and then nothing. And once we've cleverly chosen these potentials, we get something, a current profile that looks something like this. So as you can see, every 10th of a nanosecond, we get about a peak of seven and a half milliamps, which is uh, perhaps a little bit large, but it's acceptable. So now that we have a fully defined electric field and we're able to pull off electrons, we can actually simulate the particle flight. This was done in Michelle, another piece of software. Uh, I have a nice little animation of this. We can see three different pulses uh, and the color parameterizes this gamma value. Gamma is just a relativistic correction. If you're not sure what it is, uh, it's a value that's directly proportional to a uh, particle's total energy. Uh, if we do the actual math on this, the output beam at the end has a average kinetic energy of 1.74 mega electron volts and a maximum kinetic energy of 1.97 mega, mega electron volts. And this amounts to a, a peak power dissipation of about 15 kilowatts. So moving forward, we'd like to be able to test the electromagnetic property of the design. And in order to do this in lab, we need an actual physical prototype. So the two concerns with this is first, it needs to be actually machinable. And the way we get around that is basically splitting our design in two and carving out half cavities heat, like heat like this. And then we take this and basically sandwich it together to create full cavities. Uh, the second concern is while we don't actually need to be, be able to emit electrons in here, we do need to somehow be able to get in the RF uh, waves that I was referring to earlier. And we do that via these waveguides here. Now, the current state of this project is that I haven't been able to uh, 
properly cut these waveguides to get even responses in all these cavities. So right now, this uh, first full cavity isn't responding fully. And so that's the current state of our project. I'm happy to take any questions now in the chat, or you can come by my poster. Thanks.